This is the BBC News, live from the News Festival. The headlines at 12 o'clock. South Korea's president criticizes the captain in the country's ferry disaster, calling his decision to abandon ship tantamount to murder. Every little bit's not helping as Tesco announces profits are down for the second year running. The US Vice President says Washington stands firm with Ukraine and warns Russia against more provocative action. And an iconic image from over 20 years ago, echoed today by William and Kate at one of Australia's most famous natural landmarks. Good afternoon and welcome to the BBC News. I'm Lucinda Bowden. South Korea's president has strongly criticised the captain of the ferry that sank and some of his crew saying their actions in abandoning ship were tantamount to murder. Her comments came as another four crew members were arrested. Divers have now removed 64 bodies from the vessel, but 240 people, mainly teenagers, are still missing. Lucy Williamson reports from the town of Mokpo in South Korea. With growing anger at the nation's rescue efforts, the president today pointed the blame elsewhere. The conduct of the captain and some crew members is unfathomable from the viewpoint of common sense. And it was like an act of murder that cannot and should not be tolerated. This is, to some, a national disaster, to others, a national disgrace. And those divisions look set to widen as the sea slowly gives up its dead. Lucy Williamson, BBC News, Mokpo, South Korea. It's Britain's biggest retailer with more than 3,000 stores across the UK, but Tesco has announced profits have fallen for the second year in a row and sales are down too. The figures show a 6.9% drop in profits to just over £3 billion. The company is blaming the increasingly competitive market, with the rise of discounting stores like Aldi and Lidl. But Chief Executive Philip Clark says he's determined to do whatever it takes to turn the business around. The United States says it's standing by Ukraine as the country prepares to hold its crucial presidential election next month. On a visit to Kiev, the US Vice President Joe Biden said the country was facing humiliating threats but must remain one country. He called on Russia to withdraw its forces from the Ukrainian border. Earlier, the Russian Prime Minister told Parliament he was confident that it could minimise the consequences of any new sanctions imposed by the West. David Stern reports from Kiev. In troubled times, a show of support. Joe Biden travelled to Kiev to back the country's leadership in a very public way. And we will never recognise Russia's illegal occupation of Crimea and neither will the world. U.S. officials say they have arrived with an aid package. Kiev is also asking for additional economic sanctions against Russia. But the question is if anything at this point can convince the Kremlin to change course. David Stern with that report. The Duke and Duchess of Cambridge have visited Australia's most famous natural landmark as their tour of the country continues. The royal couple travelled to Uluru, also known as Ayers Rock, which is a sacred site for the area's Aboriginal people. Our royal correspondent Nicholas Witchell is following the tour. It's the must-do experience of pretty much every visitor to the so-called Red Centre of Australia, sunset at Uluru or Ayers Rock. William and Catherine posed for photographs in the evening light as their trip to Australia starts to wind down. And what of baby George in all of this, you may be wondering? Well, he's home alone tonight, or rather with his nanny at Government House in Canberra, while his mum and dad go off for a night to themselves. Nicholas Witchell, BBC News, Uluru. I can report we're just getting some breaking news through here at the BBC. There have been some multiple explosions at a bus station in Nigeria. We can cross now to Abuja now, where our correspondent Sarah Hatchard is there. Sarah, what can you tell us? 
Thank you. I am standing here at the bus station, which is just on the outskirts of the city. What we know so far is there have been two explosions here this morning. They struck at rush hour, so hundreds of commuters were making their way through. So there's potential of many fatalities and injuries. Sarah, you mentioned hundreds of fatalities, morning rush hour. I imagine the scenes there are quite devastating. What can you see? What can you describe? Behind me now, there's maybe three rows of burnt out buses, I'd say up to 50 vehicles, a lot of twisted metal I can see and smoke and flames. Ahead of me, a lot of people, a lot of frenetic action here. Emergency services are on the scene, but the amount of people affected just isn't quite clear yet. Sarah, thank you. From Abuja in Nigeria, some breaking news there about an explosion at a bus station. We'll bring you more on this when we have it. Well, that's all from the BBC News for now at 12.30. Goodbye.